Hello and welcome to the channel where I taste and rank different types of alcoholic beverages. Today I'll be doing a wine tasting. Specifically I'll be trying 6 different types of box wines. This tasting and ranking is strictly my opinion so there's no right or wrong answers. Just want to rank these guys based off the taste. Also don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Currently I do videos 2 times a week on Tuesdays and Fridays but would love to do more and you can help support the channel by hitting subscribe. Alright with that said, let's get started. Alright and these are the 6 box wines I'll be trying. I will be trying the uh, white wines and then the red wines last, so I do have a specific orders. Uh, let's see where they are. So I have two red wines, I believe. Oh, there they are. Liberty Creek and Black Box. And these are my shards and my one rosé. So I'll try the rosé in the middle and then do the shards first. So what are box wines? It's exactly what it is. You know, they're wine in a box. Um, these typically are inexpensive. Almost all of these were about $3, $3 to $5 for a, a small little bottle. Uh, the bottle is equivalent to about, you know, two to three glass worths of uh, wine and drinking. But yeah, so we're going to try some. And some of these I have tried as well in the regular bottles. So, you know, we'll see what it tastes like. All right. So for the first wine I'll be trying, it's going to be Barefoot Chardonnay right there. Wine to go is what it says. Refreshingly smooth. Uh, this is a California Chardonnay is what it says on the box. And 13% alcohol. Alright. Is that surprisingly this is not that bad I've had it in the bottle before in the bottle I didn't really quite enjoy it but I don't know for some reason the <laughs> in the box it tastes a little bit better um, it is actually pretty quite refreshing a little bit for fruit fruit forward get a little like melons it's a little citrus lemons limes notes to it Taste-wise, it's a little bit more tropical. Um, get a little more like that, like a little kind of sweet pineapple taste. Um, again, this is actually pretty good. It's decently well made. Um, surprisingly, again, it's not that bad. I was not expecting too much of it, but this was actually quite drinkable. Is it amazing? I wouldn't say so, but is it decent? I think it is decent, especially for the price point. You know, box wines are a little more, you know, travel friendly as well. So they are easier to travel with, you know. Also, there are, there's a corkscrew, so they're easier to open as well. So with the barefoot, I'm actually going to give it a B. It was, uh, it was actually quite delicious. It wasn't bad. Again, it was uh, really drinkable, if anything. Um, like I said, you know, it was on the more fruitier side. So definitely not heavy, definitely not oaky. You know, that wasn't definitely buttery, but I think a lot of people would enjoy this one. Again. Next, I have is the Vendage Chardonnay. Right there. This is 13% alcohol. This is from South Africa. That. This one has a little bit more woody, oaky smell to it. Interesting. This one also has a creamier texture, more of that buttery style. Um, when you hear the word again, buttery, it means exactly what it is. It's almost like sw sloshing butter in your mouth. That's what the term butter comes from when people say it tastes, it tastes buttery. Also, gives like a little smoothness to it as well. This taste definitely has that butteriness to it. Again, surprisingly, this is not bad. This is honestly for the style of what it is. It is very drinkable. I definitely do enjoy this. I think I could drink this whole bottle, like both the barefoot and this so far. They're they're both pretty good. Surprisingly, going into this, my expectation for a box one wasn't really high at all. 
But so far, so good. They're both really good. I give it a B. Yeah, the only thing that would make it better if it, um, I don't know, it had a little bit more flavor, more complexity to it. Uh, these guys are very, are a little one toned in the sense of taste wise. Like so the barefoot, just, just slightly fruit forward, easy drinking. Uh, the Vendage uh, was uh, definitely, you know, nice. It was buttery, but not overly buttery. It was just, you know, okay. Um, but then again, you know, what to expect. These guys are like under $5 for these box wines. So, all right, moving on. Next I have is the Black Box Chardonnay. So Black Box is known for making box wines. This is their smaller bottles or boxes than what they usually make, but they specialize in only making box wines. All right. Let's see where this is from. So this is California. Uh, out of Lodi, 2021 vintage, and it's a uh, 13.5% alcohol. Generally, there's not a lot of vintages on these boxes, but apparently box, uh, Black Box likes you, so good for them. Hmm, interesting. So immediately when I poured this out, it had a much clearer color to it compared to the others. The Vendage Barefoot had a little more yellow to it, but this was almost like a very clear yellow. Notes wise, it is more fruit forward, similar to the Barefoot. Taste wise, it's closer to the Vendage. It's more buttery. If anything, this is buttery and um, buttery and fruity together, which is actually pairs up really quite well. True to what Black Boxes usually is, they are supposed to be a higher tier brand of box wine. They spe specifically make box wine only compared to like Barefoot, which would do bottles. Same with the Vendage. This one, Black Box, surprisingly, this Chardonnay is very, very good. Surprisingly, it's, it's really good. Um, didn't blow me away in the S tier, but it was very delicious. If I was drinking this out of a bottle, if I was doing blind tasting, I would never guess this would came out of a box. Like compared to the Barefoot and Vendage, I thought they're just gonna, they're good, they're decent, they're drinkable. This one was actually very delicious. Um, I would almost rank it as one of the higher end bottles if I didn't if I didn't know any better. It, it tastes really really good, honestly. Has a very nice smooth taste very complex flavors there's a lot going on like i said it's a little bit buttery a little bit fruity um wow it's amazing it really is good that one actually surprised me quite a bit so yeah moving on next i have is franzia sunset blush it's like their pink rose so franzia another big box wine company um very similar to black boxes all they do is make box wine but Franzia is usually known for making sweet box wines. Everything they come out with, everything they make, if it says a Cabernet, if it's a Merlot, anything, it ends up being actually pretty sweet. Um, let's see. This is 9% alcohol out of California. So on the side of the box's body is light body to medium body. The sweetness is medium sweet. So let's see how sweet this is going to be. A little nice pink color, not overly pink. Not really getting a lot of nose to it. Doesn't really smell like anything. Whoa, tons of sugar. Has a slight bitterness to the end, but not overly overly bitter. But it is a little bitterness to it. But this tastes like a um, almost like sugar sugar wine. Um, it's almost like a cocktail wine. Honestly, it has so much sugar to it. It's not bad for what it is. If you want something sweeter, I guess it's good. Me personally, drinking this. I wouldn't even consider it a wine. It doesn't taste like a wine. Uh, it just tastes like a, 
a cocktail, honestly. Like someone just made a, a cocktail, had added a bunch of strawberry juice or something, and made it really sweet. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad, but then per- personally wise, I wouldn't consider this a really good wine just because it's so sweet. And wines are not really meant to be sweet unless it's like a Moscato or something. Then I guess the sweetness is going to be a different level. Um, yeah, there are dessert wines that are also sweet as well, but then they have a little more complexity to them. This one's just like juice sweet, which is not really appealing for me. All right, moving on. We have is a Liberty Kick Cabernet. This is California, 12% alcohol. <laughs> Interesting. I just read the side, so I did not chill this, but on the side of the, of the box it says, Enjoy chilled, which is not commonly you're supposed to do for red wines or Cabernets specifically. You shouldn't really chill Cabernets, but apparently... For Liberty Creek, you're supposed to. So, my mistake for not chilling it, but... Uh, yeah, it says enjoyed chilled on the side of the bo- uh, the box. So Here's this. Uh, it smells actually pretty fruity. Taste-wise, it's also very fruit-forward. Get a lot of that jam, strawberry, cherry flavor. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Um, it's, uh, I don't know if I would call this wine. This is almost borderline to me, like almost like a fruit punch, like almost good for a sangria. Definitely still drinkable. Um, but overall my taste wise, I didn't really enjoy it. If I made a mistake too, this is Chardonnay, but it's supposed to be Cabernet. But anyways, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, so I'm gonna give it a C. I honestly, then for for being a Cabernet and being a box wine, um, this was actually more, way more fruit forward what a Cabernet should be. Uh, almost borderline being like a uh, like a uh, almost a red blend. Um, again, personally for me, I didn't enjoy it. It tasted fine. It's still drinkable, so that's why I'm giving it a C. Um, overall, though, is it a Cabernet? Not really. Um, no, again, but is it drinkable? Yeah. But personally wise, I enjoy it. Again, if you want something slightly sweeter, more fruitier, like fruit punch wise, I said, then maybe you'll enjoy it. All right, last one is going to be the Black Box Cabernet. This Black Box is actually from Chile. So the grapes from this one is Chile, while the Chardonnay comes from California. So and it's also a 2020. And let's see, alcohol percentage is 13%. Interesting. Yeah, here's the label, black box. Here's the wine. Mmm, really nice aroma. Has a little bit of oak, a little fruitiness to it. This one definitely drinks more like a cab. Um, for someone who's more to that cab drinking and wants something decent, but needs, you know, more for the bang for the buck, this actually would work out really well. Uh, taste wise, you know, it tastes like a, li- a little bit of a heavier style cab, almost like a Paso cab where it has like the medium body to full body. Um, but it has tons of flavor uh, as well. You know, it's actually a really decent cab. It's not too dry. It has a little dryness, but not overly dry. But again, overall flavor wise. Definitely get a little bit of fruitiness to it, to a little bit of oak. But same with like the what I said about the shard. If I was drinking this one, I would never guess it came from a box. It tasted really decently well made, especially being a box wine. So for a black box Cabernet, I'm also gonna give it an A. I thought that they did a really good job. I think it did a phenomenal job. Like if I was drinking this blind tasted, I wouldn't have known this came from a box. Um, Overall, like I said, the black box is a higher quality of the uh, box wines. And as you see, it did make a difference. Um, you know, it was actually, you know, they were pretty good. And, you know, Barefoot Vendage, you know, they do bottles as well. And then, you know, they made it into the, the to B, which, you know, is a decent for them. Especially since they don't specialize in box wine, but they do specialize in, in expensive wines. And Liberty Creek is your cheaper wine. You know, in France, it is a cheap box wine. So they made it a lip bottom. So almost like this, looking at this, price point did make a difference because black box are a little bit more expensive. 
these guys in the middle of the road, and then Franz and the Liberty Kick are the cheapest. All right, guys, uh, this is my list. What do you guys think? Uh, if you guys had these before, what do you guys rank these guys? Is there anything you guys would like me to try? Leave a comment. Let me know. And again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And again, it goes a long way to helping the channel. Thank you for watching, and cheers.